Spoilers! If you haven't seen the first episode of Prehistoric Planet and care about being spoiled about the inclusion of some critters, stay away from this video till you've seen it. This video was made by using my own knowledge, scientific papers, as well as the words of the people involved with the show itself. This is in no way meant to provide undue criticism towards the hard work that went into the show. In fact, there are very little instances where it may come off as me saying that something is wrong. As I am not an expert on every single group of animals, living or extinct, I used the words of other experts that may know the given organism better than I. Many criticisms are merely nitpicking and do not affect the quality of the overall show, and many are also debatable. I used the words provided by lead paleontological consultant Dr. Darren Nash via his Twitter threads discussing the designs and design philosophy of all the animals in Prehistoric Planet to construct a more fleshed out scientific discussion than the show provides. Obviously, the show is meant to be more visual and myth-breaking or trope-busting than purely informational or educational. It does deliver a good amount of scientific information, but only that which is absolutely needed in the context of the scene or episode. I think a lot of people wanted more thorough explanations of why some animals were reconstructed the way they were, especially considering how strongly updated they are with speculative but scientifically rooted displays, behaviors, and tissues because of the stranglehold the 80s and 90s nostalgia-fueled outdated reconstructions have on most dinosaur-related media. So, please take all this into consideration when watching my scientific reviews of Prehistoric Planet. I was not aware of any information that may come out after the writing, recording, editing, or publication of these videos that may counter any issues I bring up with the dinosaurs of Prehistoric Planet. As of the writing of this preamble, no full-length documentaries or discussion of the behind-the-scenes work on the series has come out. Some rather short tidbits on the location filming, philosophy, and computer animation work have been released, but this does not entail the full breadth of the project. Scaphited Ammonites Design. There's a sequence of a group of what is only referred to as scaphited ammonites using their bioluminescent skin to communicate with one another and conduct some mating dances. The shell of these ammonites is rather similar to those of some species of the scaphites genus specifically, but it is obviously meant to be some generic and cretaceous member of the group, a group which survived the mass extinction only to go extinct in the early Paleocene. Is there fossil evidence of the bioluminescent spots in the ammonite skin? No. Ammonites were around for 250 million years or more and lived worldwide. Their direct cousins are the squids and octopuses. The modern relatives of the ammonites have many examples of bioluminescence, so it seems almost mathematically impossible for some ammonites not to have had the same thing going on, given they've been around so long. What did the soft tissues of the ammonites look like? For the last hundred or so years, the answer was entirely speculative, unknown, and based on close relatives. That was until 2021 and a paper reanalyzing an ammonite fossil found nearly 20 years ago. This specimen was very well preserved, but it took a CT scanning to get the deets on the ooey gooey stuff on the inside. That internal stuff showed many of the major muscles and organs that filled the shell when the animal was alive. This found that ammonites had muscles that would help them retract into their shells for defense, something that was hypothesized for decades but never had any direct evidence to back it up. Then, another specimen was described in 2021 of what appears to be the soft parts of an ammonite splayed out roadkill style. Together, these specimens showed this sort of orientation. Many ammonites had a shelly cap that covered their heads. They were used to seal their shell when they retracted their bodies into their shell, and these new specimens show where this cap attached. As such, these scaphited ammonites represent literally the cutting edge of ammonite science and are the best ones ever put to screen, like a lot of things in this series.
Behavior Like with the bioluminescence, the mating dance of the vibing ammonites is entirely speculative for ammonites, but inferred from a bunch of living cephalopods that do this. Like I mentioned before, with 250 million years or more's worth of time to work with, I'm sure they evolved even stranger things than bioluminescence and disco dancing in the moonlight. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Ray, Isaiah Garza, Dinosaur, Christoph Hubinger, Biotiverse, and Arda Bayer. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons The Dogman, Iron Bladesman, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.